New York City. They say there's nowhere else like it, home to eight million people, countless structures, monuments, and landmarks, every one of them unique, or so we think. Uniqueness is an idea so familiar, we never even question it. Experience tells us people and objects are one of a kind. Why else would we visit museums and collect great masterpieces? Yet a new picture of the cosmos is coming to light in which nothing is unique. Not that the world's great masterpieces are fakes. Instead, I'm talking about something far more profound, a new picture of the cosmos that challenges the very notion of uniqueness, one in which duplicates are inevitable. And that's just the beginning. There might be duplicates not just of objects, but of you and me and everyone else. But if this new picture is right, where are these duplicates? And why haven't we ever seen them? The answer may lie outside our universe. There was a time when the word universe meant all there is, everything. The notion of more than one universe, more than one everything, seemed impossible. But perhaps, if we could go beyond our solar system, beyond the Milky Way, even beyond other distant galaxies, past the end of the observable universe, we'll find that there's more, a lot more, that our universe is not alone. There may be other universes. In fact, there might be new ones being born all the time. We may actually live in an expanding sea of multiplying universes, a multiverse. If we could visit these other universes, we'd find that some might have basic properties of nature so foreign that matter as we know it couldn't exist. Others might have galaxies, stars, even a planet that looks familiar, but with some surprising differences. And if there are an infinite number of universes in the multiverse, somewhere there's a place where almost everything is identical to ours, except for the slightest details. Like maybe there's another Brian Greene who ends up in a different line of work. If the multiverse is indeed infinite, then one is going to have to confront a lot of possibilities that are very hard to imagine. There'll be other places where there'll be Alan Goose who will look and think and act exactly like me, as well as many where there'll be Alan Goose who look and think almost exactly like me, but with some small differences. Is it science? Is it a part of metaphysics? Is it just philosophy? Is it religion? Physicists tend not to ask those questions. They just say, let's follow the logic. And the logic seems to lead there. However unfamiliar and strange the multiverse might seem, a growing number of scientists think it may be the final step in a long line of radical revisions to our picture of the cosmos. That is, there was a time when we thought that the Earth was at the center of the cosmos and that everything else revolved around us. Then along came scientists like Galileo and Copernicus and they showed us that it's the sun, not the Earth, that's at the center of our solar system. And our solar system, it's just a little neighborhood in the outskirts of a gigantic galaxy. And our galaxy? It's one of hundreds of billions of galaxies that make up our universe. Now, all of these ideas sounded 
outrageous when they were first proposed, but today we don't even question them. The idea of a multiverse may be similar. It simply may require a drastic change in our cosmic perspective. On the other hand, some scientists think that the multiverse is nothing but a dead end for physics. I'm very uncomfortable with the multiverse. To become solid science, it's got a lot of, a lot of growing up to do. You know, it exists in the same way that, you know, angels might exist. We have to make our bets. And I think right now the multiverse is a pretty good bet. I think there's a good chance that the multiverse is real and that 100 years from now people might be convinced that it's real. So where did this idea come from? And what's the evidence for it? Well, several surprising discoveries suggest that we really may be part of the multiverse. The first of these discoveries has to do with the generally accepted theory of the origin of our universe, the Big Bang. According to this theory, our universe began some 14 billion years ago in an intensely violent explosion. Over billions of years, the universe cooled and coalesced, allowing the formation of stars, planets, and galaxies. As a result of that explosion, the universe is still expanding today. But if you could run the history of our universe in reverse, all the way back to the beginning, you'd find that the Big Bang Theory tells us nothing about what sent everything hurtling outward in the first place. It's called the Big Bang Theory, but the one thing that it really says nothing about at all is the bang itself. Uh, it says nothing about what banged, why it banged, or what happened before it banged. So what fueled that violent explosion? What force could have driven everything apart? The quest to figure that out would bring scientists face to face with the multiverse. One physicist whose work unexpectedly helped lay the foundation for the multiverse idea is Alan Guth. Today, he's a professor at MIT. But back in 1979, Guth and a colleague, Henry Tai, were pursuing a new idea about how particles might have formed in the early universe. Henry suggested to me that we should maybe look at whether or not this new process that we were thinking of would influence the expansion rate of the universe. Guth and Tai hadn't set out to investigate the expansion rate of the universe in the first moments after the Big Bang. But Henry Tai's question caused Guth to review their calculations one more time. I stayed up quite late that night and went over the calculations very carefully, trying to make sure everything was correct. As the night wore on, Guth discovered something extraordinary in the equations describing how new particles might have formed in the early universe. And came to the shocking conclusion that these newfangled particle theories will have a tremendous effect on the expansion rate of the universe. The kind of process Henry and I were talking about would drive the universe into a period of incredibly rapid exponential expansion. What Guth found in the map was evidence that in the extreme environment of the very early universe, gravity can act in reverse. Instead of pulling things together, this repulsive gravity would repel everything around it, causing a huge expansion. I immediately became very excited about it and scribbled out the calculation in my notebook and then at the end, I wrote spectacular realization with this double box around it. So I realized that if it was right, it could be very important. 